What's going on, boys? Today we are talking a bit about surviving bad days. Not in a comprehensive way, because I think we talk about this in roundabout ways pretty regularly, but some other ways of looking at it that came upon me today. Firstly, there isn't a way you are supposed to be. There isn't a way your life was supposed to have gone, or is supposed to be going. These are concepts either people are pushing on you, or you're creating and are pushing on yourself, that are separating you from reality as it is. Saying, I was supposed to be a neurosurgeon, is on the level of saying, I was supposed to go to Hogwarts. These are ideas. They're fictions. Now, maybe you could have become a neurosurgeon, but you didn't. And there are probably a number of reasons you didn't. But we'll get into those. For now, you aren't. You're torturing yourself with a concept. There isn't a way things are supposed to be. There is just the way things are. And if you dump all your time into thinking about or torturing yourself with the way things are supposed to be, you aren't dumping your energy into the way things are. Or what you can do with who you are and what you have right now. You can torture yourself about the way things should have been until you die. But the universe is going to torture you all you need and then some until you die. You don't need to help it. And frankly, you don't need to do anything. Letting go of what should have been, at least for now because I don't think you'll ever really let go of what should have been. If you can let go of what should have been for now, you can at least relieve yourself of that weight while you need that relief. You're over encumbered in New Vegas. For now, just drop that shit. It'll come back later, don't you worry. But you have it in you to let go of that fiction that should have been for now. And this is hard to explain, but when you let go of it, that, that idea, you can see it for what it is. It's not this separate and real material thing weighing on you. It's your imagination. Contrast it against reality. The reality you're living right now. There is no should have been. There is only what is. And recognizing that when you need to recognize it can accomplish either with no other actions, just relieving some of that pressure from the pressure cooker, or it can alleviate some of that static so you can focus and take better actions now. And the reason I say what should have been or what you should be is a fiction is because let's imagine a reality in which you made every correct decision. Everything played out exactly as it was supposed to, quotes, until you got to where you think you should have been. The moment you achieve it, life can, for no reason whatsoever, give you the finger and take all of it from you. Reality is stronger than generations of good decisions. Maybe you could have become a neurosurgeon. Maybe you could have worked hard in school, had a loving family, been born into lots of money with only the best mentors around you, the best friends in the world, and reality could still, would still, on a whim, for no reason, take all of it from you, without even giving you 
the dignity of dying afterward. So maybe, yes, you can imagine this fiction as a reality, something that actually should have been, and it still wouldn't matter. Reality can and will turn that fantasy right back into the idea of what should have been. Even if it is real, it isn't real, because it can be taken from you, and there is nothing you can do about it. Ergo, what is, is what is, because reality says this is what's supposed to be. Reality says this is reality. If you somehow manage to fight it, reality is going to put you right back in your place. And once you're in that place, that miserable little place, reality wants you to torture yourself with what should have been. With what should be. It wants you to focus on what you don't have. So it can take pleasure in your miserable wanting so it can then take more from you and make you wish you had what you were just wishing you had more than. Reality is ridiculous. It's nonsense. So torturing yourself over what isn't or what should be, you're doing reality's job for it. It'll torture you more than enough on its own. Focus on what's in front of you. It's all you have. It's all you'll ever have. And this is one of the reasons I think your ability to endure and to learn lessons constantly is more important than anything else. I had a bad day today. And it's been one of those days on the level trying to make yourself not hurt just makes you hurt that much worse. Everything you try. And I already know this, but for some reason there is always the instinct to fight that degree of bad feeling going through your stupid little routines, listening to your stupid little music, thinking about your stupid little ideas, and feeling worse and worse with each attempt, even if you don't recognize those things as attempts. Trying to do anything except Feeling as bad as you feel is an attempt to escape that hurt. And I needed, again, to relearn the lesson. Stop fighting it. There's no getting out of this. Let yourself hurt. And you don't let these bad feelings hurt you in the hopes going with them will make them go away. No, you stop fighting because there's nothing else to do. Your only option is to let it do whatever it's going to do to you until it's done with you. This is going to happen whether or not you fight it. So why make it worse and lose that much more dignity in the process. Fuck you, negative feelings. I'm not going to run away. Do whatever you're gonna do. Because that's the other thing, right? These negative feelings, they want you to try to run away. They want you to struggle. That's why it hurts so much more when you do. I mean, it's going to hurt no matter what, but don't give it the pleasure of hoping you can get out of it. So I'm lying there waiting for this to pass and now for the first time wondering what am I supposed to learn in not fighting these feelings? Well, I think one of the things you learn 
aside from keeping your dignity, is when you're squirming and screaming and trying to get away from this awful feeling, you make bad decisions. You reach for anything that might make this feeling go away. You get drunk. You flail around for anyone to save you, not paying attention to their character or intentions. You lash out at people who don't deserve it. You buy shit you don't need, hoping that will fill the growing void in your stomach. You do any number of things you would normally recognize as stupid because you are that afraid of feeling this way. You're that... you're hurting that much. Even if, or especially if, on some level, you recognize none of these things are going to help. There is no getting out of this feeling. It has you until it's done with you. I think learning just to take it without flailing and making bad decisions that are not going to help in the end anyway prepares you not to act stupid when other bad things happen. Bad things outside your emotional state. I survived the abyssal darkness and gnashing teeth. I'm not going to freak out and make bad decisions over whatever this problem is. Because I recognize two things. One, freaking out is not going to make this problem go away. And two, I have survived much worse problems. That doesn't make this problem feel any better but I recognize I have it in me not to handle it like an idiot. Hence why I say your ability to endure and to learn are more important than anything else. No matter how capable you are, no matter how wealthy you are, no matter how careful you are, reality is going to fuck you over always. Your ability to handle these situations as best you can, and to come out of it with the most you can. To come out of a situation in which you lose everything but your life with something, that something being knowledge, is desirable, above all else. Endurance and knowledge are the only two things that are going to be constant in your life. And the inevitability of misery, that's another thing. Reality loves making you wish for things you used to take for granted. You are where you are right now. You at least have internet access to be listening to this video. Tomorrow, you'll be homeless, disabled, and wanted in 50 states, if not imprisoned. Now, things might not get that extreme, but tomorrow things are going to be worse. Guaranteed. Worse than you can imagine right now. That's another thing reality loves. Taking someone who is careful, plans, tries to make good decisions, and hitting them out of nowhere with something they never could have seen coming, never could have prepared for, and losing everything to that thing. It's gonna get a lot worse. At least for right now, Things are not as bad as they will be. Don't try to survive the misery you're going through today to see a brighter tomorrow, because that tomorrow isn't coming. Sleep like a baby tonight while you still can in preparation for the gauntlet tomorrow. You won't get to sleep this well tomorrow. But Skimmerlet, I can't sleep. I took 20 milligrams of melatonin, and I'm lying here with my eyes wide open. Well, be thankful you're lying here and not being mauled by dogs. 
because you will be mauled by dogs tomorrow. I promise you. You think I'm joking. You're going to have the worst day of your life tomorrow. Enjoy the fact that you can lie here in silence and peace for now. You're not going to have this luxury tomorrow. And that's another thing. While tomorrow hasn't come, you can make preparations for tomorrow. Now, of course, reality is going to do with you whatever it wants to do with you, but fuck reality. You're going to get shot eventually, but there are some bullets you can dodge. Knowing something is going to go wrong, do what you can right now. And then, when it does go wrong, and your preparations came to nothing, at least you made them, and you can focus on surviving this and learning something from it. Maybe this is something you can prevent in the future. You didn't see it coming before. You won't not see it coming again. And then the last thing is back to another form of should have been or should be. Move should be away from you to other common should be topics. People should treat each other better. And that's in should be land. In reality, people treat each other like shit. That's what is. You can think about what should be all you want and still change nothing. Accepting what is as what is relieves even more pressure or allows you to formulate better objectives. You can't make humans all together treat each other better. You probably can, however, at least try, feasibly try, to create a positive standard of behavior among a smaller group of people. I'm stuck on the side of the road without a spare tire. People should help one another. People don't help one another. In the future, bring an extra spare tire to replace the spare you used after your original tire went out. Double spares. You're going to torture yourself with what should be or what should have been, no matter what you do, but you can learn to recognize you don't have to all the time. What should be or should have been is not what is. What is is what is. And those are all ideas that are getting me through right now. But that about Rippity Raps this one up. I hope you enjoyed watching because I certainly enjoyed making it. A little bit shorter this time. Like if you enjoyed, it helps me out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't because we do this shit sometimes. And comment your thoughts because I love hearing from you. That's what we were going to talk about. I forgot. We were supposed to talk about the spiritual side of this. But we'll get to that another time. I'm not asking you any questions this time. Thanks again for watching every day. Really, really a lot of fun on this channel. So much fun. In fact, you can put it on a charger and let it charge. Because fun comes with a lot of electricity. Or comes from a lot of electricity. That's so much for me on this channel. And I look forward to doing this with you guys again in the future.